Can we segue to your family? Sure, absolutely. You're, 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 and again, you were pushing family mm -hmm. when it wasn't cool. Correct. Especially in our business. It, right. was, it was better to say, I'm a bachelor. Mm -hmm. You always pushed the fact, mm -hmm. I love my wife. Mm -hmm. You now have five kids. Five, yep. Where, you know, and I asked this question of several of our guests. Where's the work-life balance for you? How do you juggle that? I mean, it's easy for me now, but back then, I mean, the industry raised me. The industry raised me that you had to be a bachelor, you had to be single, you had to live that lifestyle, and that's the lifestyle I lived until I almost lost my wife. And then you had to take a step back and be like, well, what's love? Like, what is money? What is wealthy? What is being successful? And I realized I didn't want to lose that over this industry. I didn't want to lose that over anything else. So I had to kind of find myself and really learn what love was, what love is, and get a, a relationship with God. And it's funny to say that because everybody say, yeah, I got a relationship with God. God is good. God is great. Thank you for the food we eat. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's what my relationship was. I go to church maybe on Easter whenever my grandmother made me, but then when you get to a dark area and you feel like, damn, I'm about to lose it all. This money means nothing. These cars, this jewelry means nothing. And then you realize that I met my wife when she was 15, I was 16. We've been married 18 years together, 25, my high school sweetheart. Um, and you realize what love is. And then you try to fix all the wrongs that you've ever done. And you realize what's the most important thing out of everything. And that's my wife and my kids. And I was like, I'm gonna promote that. I don't care what people say. But I, I realized with me promoting it and me pushing it so hard, I start to see other people doing it. And that feels good. You know, that, that shows me that I'm, I'm a positive influence on certain things. And, and I just love to see people promoting their wives and their kids. And I love to see people playing with their kids online and doing stupid dances. I mean, I love to see the most gangsterous rapper being pookie, pookie, pookie with your kids, because that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and that's what I'm about. I, don't, I, like, I will embarrass myself with my kids. I don't care. Whatever's going to put a smile on my daughter's face or my son's face, it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. So you go through, a, and, and I speak about this, I wouldn't typically do it, but you've been very open yeah, about yeah. Um, the struggles in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Almost losing your wife. Correct. That really opened your eyes to, damn, mm -hmm. I have so much that is beyond music, is beyond money. Mm -hmm. This is what's important in my life. Absolutely. How did that transition to your Casey Crew podcast? Well, after... Me trying to, after I had my infidelity, and um, my shit was big. I apologized on radio, took all my ego out of me. I didn't care about ego. I just care about fixing the situation, which took, it, took a, it took a long time. And, and we still work as a, as, a, as a couple, a married couple. Look, looking back, and I'm sorry to cut you off your train of thinking, but apologizing on radio, I know at the time that could have seemed like a good idea, but shouldn't some things be left quiet? Nah. Really? Because I took it like I embarrassed her in public, so why not apologize in public? I can embarrass her in public and then be behind the scenes, baby, 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 I'm sorry. But I wanted the world to know, yo, I fucked up and I'm sorry. And whatever it takes and however long it's going to take, I'm willing to put the work in to make sure you understand that I'm sorry and I want a second chance to make this right. And okay, I know that's, that's your train of thinking, mm -hmm. but what was hers when you went on morning radio and apologized for infidelity? Um, it was a little bit of both. She was, she was upset. She was embarrassed. Um, she couldn't believe I did it. But see, one thing I would say about my wife is she's that type of person where she could be mad at me, but then when the world starts to try to make fun of me for something, she's like, nah, that's, that's still my baby. Um, and that's what it was. And, um, we worked. We worked, like I worked like hell to, to, to make sure that we were good. I never left the house. I mean, like I'm like, I'm not leaving this house. Once I leave the house, it's over. I'm not, whatever I got, whatever I got to take. If I got to sleep in the garage, in the car, and um, I worked like crazy, you know what I mean? And, and it took a lot of working. It took a lot of help from people. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I always tell a story about Tyrese, who I didn't really know at the time. He just heard me apologize. It was like, yo, bro, I, I feel your pain. I want to help. And you know, Tyrese was calling my wife, and. It was it was it was crazy and weird, but all these people helped. You know what I mean? And we got to a position where we could talk, and then you know we just were working on our relationship. And 
after, you know, she decided to forgive me. And we just started working on our relationship just as being open. Uh, I think in a relationship, I just wasn't open as a person. You know, I wasn't honest as a person, you know what I mean? And the cheating actually helped because after we got through that, it kind of left our relationship raw where everything was there. I can talk to my wife about anything. She can talk to me about anything. We can discuss anything in this world. And when we started moving on and started talking, so many people would come up to us and be like, yo, I, I admire y'all. I admire what y'all doing and how y'all did it. How? So we said, let's do a podcast and talk about our relationship. And the podcast became more than just a podcast. and It became therapy for us because we're talking about shit that's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. We're talking about real shit. We don't keep nothing hidden, nothing at all. Um, and we just started doing it. And people would just started coming out and listening and coming to, you know, our, when we do live events and stuff like that. And it just kind of caught on. And we just said, you know, we're going to keep doing it. So it is therapeutic for both of you guys. I think so, yeah. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.